backward. Um, Lady Louisa Connolly was born on the 5th of December, 1743. She was born under the sign of Sagittarius star. For the information of those who might think this is relevant. She was the fifth child of Charles Lennox, the second Duke of Richmond, and his wife, Sarah, formerly Cadogan. The Richmonds made a lot of their wealth from coal in England. Louisa was a great granddaughter of Charles II, her father being Charles II's son. She was a great, great granddaughter of Charles I, who was beheaded, which could explain her nervousness following the French Revolution and the 1798 revolt. Her sister Georgina married Henry Fox, a politician, and was mother of Tom Fox. Louisa's sister Emily married James, the Duke of Leinster, and lived at Carton House in Maynooth. She was mother to Edward Fitzgerald, a United Irishman and one of the leaders of the 1798 rebellion. Seamus will talk more about him, that later. Louisa spent her early years in France, uh, but she was eight when her parents, Charles and Sarah, died. She and Sarah and Cecilia, her sister, were cared for by Emily at Carton. When Louisa was 15, she met Tom Connolly while out horse riding. They subsequently married, and Louisa lived uh, at Castletown House from the age of 16. Uh, Connolly had inherited Castletown House and other lands, which provided him up, up to 25,000 income from rents per year, which is equivalent around 4.4 million uh, today. And the advantage they had was they owned their land outright, uh, not leased it, and, and this was a, a, a considerable advantage to them. Um, Lu Louisa had um, was much liked, and her nephew George Napier wrote of the final moments of her burial at the family vault at Tea Lane, Selbridge. Quote, a general rush was made to the vault each striving to get a last look at the coffin which contained the remains of one they almost revered as a saint. Now, Louisa did not regard herself as saintly. Before her death, she said she would like to think that all the poor people whom I might have assisted and that in my prosperity I neglected will be witness to the justice of punishment I receive and will forgive me. Writing to Sarah in 1772, Louisa was sure that servants gave their employers more than employers gave them. In 1820, the year before her death, Louisa wrote to her brother-in-law, George Napier. She said, um, I cannot help hoping that with wise heads, I may see the principle established that the poor ought to be the first care of the rich. The labouring classes are the most populous in all countries. It is through their bodily labours that the productions of the earth are to be had, and justice calls for their receiving that share of them that is necessary for their maintenance and comfort. She went on to reflect that the labouring class have no power but to redress themselves, but by violence. And there was a quotation, uh, uh, she put in brackets here, the most destructive mode possible for them and their superiors. The rich ought therefore to be beforehand with them and consider the justice that is due to them. Justice would soon direct every understanding as to what ought to be done without the help of the heartfelt pleasures that religious motives give upon assisting one's fellow creatures. Um, these quotations are very interesting for me, particularly given the power and the status that Louisa would have had at the time. I mean, she was a uh, confidant of the, uh, kings and queens, and it, it was very, very interesting. She, these comments came quite a long time before Britain had ended slavery, uh, uh, which was legally just shortly after her own death. Thanks.